Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. First time visiting my channel? Like, subscribe and share. Now, I haven't done any videos on immigration for a while, but, you know, with the Brexit imminent, we don't know if we're going to leave with a deal or no deal, but whatever happens after the 31st of Oct um, October, people are concerned, and especially people who have children abroad. And what I was, um, why I decided to do this video is because what are, what is the situation if you want to bring your child over before the 31st of October, which is not very far. It's only a couple of months. So are you going to have everything in place? There's a lot of things you need to have in place depending on who you are. Um, if you are an EEA national, it's a bit similar to the refugee status, but totally different if you have permanent residence in the UK. Now, what I don't understand, I'll just as a side, what I don't understand is that um, EEA nationals, they have an online application which is free. Refugees, um, asylum seekers who have refugee status, they have free online they can apply free online but when it comes to people who are legally in the uk british nationals if they want to bring their kids over it's going to cost them 1523 plus a 1200 surcharge how does that work how can you charge um p different people different prices for the same process and the requirements for um, British nationals, people legally resident in the UK, i.e. who have indefinite leave to remain, are totally different. Much, much more, much more extensive than asylum seekers and EEA nationals. So really, what you're saying is that you want to encourage um, asylum seekers to bring over their children, but you don't want to encourage... British nationals to bring over theirs. Anyway, that's um, the long and short of it. I just wanted to read out a couple of bits. Um, in order to bring your child into the UK, you're going to uh, have to answer these questions. This is regardless of whether you are an EEA national, a, of a, you know, parents, um, asylum seekers, but mostly these will be asked of the person, the British resident living in the UK, legal resident. Okay, why is the child not with you? Because all of a sudden now you hear Brexit's coming, you start panicking and you start thinking, oh, I've got to bring my child over um, just in case. That's not going to be good enough. You're going to need to prove why whoever's been looking after your child up until now can't look after them still. And you're going to need evidence. Are they too old? Are they sick? You know, what is the reason why they can't look after your child? And why have you decided only now to bring your child over? Um, and who has been looking after? Is it a guardian? Is it a relative? Has that relative got any other relatives who can help look after the child? So um, that child doesn't have to come to the UK. You have to think about all of that. Um, how long have you been maintaining the child for, for? You're going to have to show money transfers. You're going to have to show communication statements. Every contact you have made with your child and the carer needs to have, you need to have evidence of that. So don't just think, oh yeah, because it's your child and you've got a birth certificate, that's going to be sufficient. It's not going to be sufficient. Um, can you afford to bring the child over? What's your income? It doesn't have to be the strict income, the criteria like 18,600, but you have to show a steady income. You have to show your P60. You're going to have to show bank, bank statements. You're going to have to show pay slips. Um, how much do you earn? Is it enough for you to look after a child? That's another thing you have to take into consideration. Um, what are your outgoings after you've paid your rent, your council tax, your bills? What is that? What are you left with? So it's not just the main amount, because any time you give one of these government um, organisations um, your amount of earnings, they automatically deduct 
a percentage for council tax, a percentage for rent, a percentage for food, a percentage for car payments. They might just assume that you've got a car. A uh, percentage um, for bills, electric, gas bills, water bills. They take all of that out and they usually take out maybe two thirds for your bills and leave you with a third. Roughly. Don't quote me on that. And then that third is it enough to look after a child. So you have to be earning a decent amount, even though they're not going to ask you or they're not going to um, dictate how much you've got to earn. They're going to make their own conclusions when they're doing the assessment. Um, do you have any other source of income? So you might have a salary, but is there any other money coming from anywhere else? Um, is is the child, do you get maintenance, child maintenance? Do you have a part-time job or anything like that? Do you have, um, what do they call it, silent income uh, or passive income where, you know, you've, you've got something going on and that brings you income every now and then? Um, how old is a child? That's going to make a difference for the EEA National for the um, EEA National, the child has to be under 21 with the refugee and the um, British resident, it has, it, they have, the child has to be under 18. Um, when did you last see him and her? You need to show tickets, you have to have boarding passes, all that kind of stuff to prove when you last went to see him or her and how often you go and that kind of stuff. Um, and like I said, why you want, why is it that you want to bring the child over now as opposed to what is your status? Indefinite leave to remain. Um, are you permanent, you know, you permanent resident, actually naturalised? Are you a refugee? Do you have humanitarian protection? EU national? That kind of stuff. Um, a lot of people, because of the end of free movement, if it happens, um, this only applies to people um, who are in the country and resident in the country before the 31st of October, if it happens then. So as long as you're in the country, you're settled before the East, before this applies, this applies to EU nationals. But providing you're in the country before the 31st of October, you've either got your resident card or your, you know, your British residency or whatever. Providing you're legally in the country before the 31st of October, you don't have to worry about anything. But always check an immigration lawyer. Remember, I'm not an immigration lawyer. I'm just passing on information. You need to check this out for yourself. OK, um, OK, so the criteria of EEA nationals who are parents, the child needs to be under 21. Application is an EEA family permit application. That's the application form you need. It's online and it's free. The documentary evidence relating to the child's relationship with you will be the birth certificate. Um, voluntary DNA will help. It's not it's not compulsory anymore. The child EEA passport, proof of communication with the child, um, the, the proof that you're in the country, in the UK, legally. Um, like I said, you must have pay slips, P60, council tax bills, mortgage payments or tenancy agreements, stuff like that. OK, so if you're an asylum seeker, seeker or someone with humanitarian protection, you want to bring your child over. Um, your humanitarian protection must be endorsed by the Home Office and the child needs to be under 18 and the child needs to be born before the parent was granted asylum. So that is very important. You can't have a pair, you can't have a child while you are waiting for asylum and expect to um, apply for that child. Like, suppose you went back to your country to visit your child and then you got pregnant. That's not going to work because... Um, it's just not going to work. OK, and the application form that you're going to need to complete is the family union reunion, family reunion application form. Um, it's free and the application is made online. Um, documentary evidence is the same as for the EEA national. Uh, but the additional um, evidence that you need is uh, the tubular chlorosis um, certificate to make sure the child is healthy. Um, so where the ch uh, parent is British or settled in the UK, it gets a bit more complicated and expensive. 
Um, so you have to prove that you have sole responsibility for the child, i.e. that you're responsible for all the decisions relating to the child. Um, and the child is under 18. Parent has to show sole responsibility of the child in terms of making all decisions regarding the child's upbringing. Um, that's to do with education, welfare, health, discipline. Um, information regards the father. Where is the father? Who is the father? Um, um, who is the child currently being looked after by? Uh, when the parent is in the UK, why can't the carer continue to look after the child? Must provide document ev documentary evidence again. Um, Oh, there's no financial requirements, so you don't have to show how much you earn. But like I said, they will do that financial assessment to see after you've put in your pay slips and the amount you have in your bank, after they've deducted um, your mandatory expenses, how much do you have left? And they'll, they'll ask themselves, even though there's no requirement, they'll ask themselves, hmm, this person is not going to be able to afford to look after a child. We don't want them. We don't want them to have recourse to public funds. Actually, you have to. You have to sign something that you will not nor your child, and you cannot be on public funds when you apply, make this application. If you're on public funds, forget it. So, um, if you're on any kind of welfare benefit, you cannot apply for your child. It's not going to be successful, unless, of course, there's. Um, culminating circumstances or mitigating circumstances the child is in is hardship or there's some kind of dangerous situation then maybe there are exceptional circumstances but like i says always um get a qualified immigration lawyer you, they can be found on www.gov.uk or the home office website or the citizens advice bureau website i think that is the osic or something um they're accredited lawyers. So make sure you get a good lawyer. Um, yeah, and just like, like I said, proof parent is not relying on public funds and will not rely on public funds when the child comes to the UK. Income needs to be a particular level. Like I said, you know, that calculation. Um, Let's see what else. Proof of maintenance sent to the country. You need proof of money, transfer receipts, communication records between the parent, the child and the carer. All documentary evidence as above, like for the um, e EEA or EU national and the asylum seekers. So all what I said before. Um, yeah. Where is the other parent? They'll want to know. Is he around or is she around? Uh, because that will um, determine whether or not who has sole responsibility. Um, I'm not quite sure why they assume that one parent isn't around. Why can't a couple apply for a child to come over? But I'm not quite sure about that. Um, existing arrangements. Um, is the child being looked after a guardian, sister, aunt, grandparent? And like I said, why can't they continue? Are they sick? Are someone dying? Is there a tragedy in the in in in, in the family? Um, is one is the carer too old? Those kind of things. If that's the case, you probably have to send in their birth certificate. And the thing is, I don't know how you do that because they only accept original certificates. I don't even know if they accept notarized um, copies. But you're once again, you'll have to get that checked out. Application fee, like I said, is one thousand five hundred and twenty-three. And um, the health surcharge fee is 1200 So I'm trying not to keep my videos too long. So hopefully this is helpful and bye-bye.